This weekend, President Obama expressed condolences on the killing of 24 Pakistani soldiers after a NATO airstrike along the Afghanistan border. According to the White House, Obama called the November 26 attack a regrettable incident and pledged a full investigation in a Sunday night phone call to Pakistani President Asif Ali Zardari. The attack prompted Pakistan to boycott an international conference on Afghanistan that began today in Bonn, Germany. The conference is focusing on international involvement in Afghanistan after 2014, the timeline for NATO's withdrawal of troops. The conference is also being seen as a referendum on 10 years of American-led war in the country. For more, we're joined by Joshua Faust, a fellow at the American Security Project and the author of Afghanistan Journal. Welcome to FSRN. Thanks. Hello. First, talk about the withdrawal of Pakistan from the conference and what it means for the talks. What this means is that Afghanistan's biggest partner, the most important player in the insurgency in Afghanistan, and then also the most important player in terms of generating a regional security consensus, is not going to be participating in the talks that are meant to do precisely that. So on kind of a basic level, one of the primary players that the United States at least needed to have participating in this conference has decided not to show up as a protest. And is that uh, a question of legitimacy of the conference or is is it concrete things that that will come out of it that will be affected? I mean, it, it, it's, it's both. The legitimacy issue uh, is kind of a tricky one because there are, I believe, a hundred different countries and major international organizations that are participating in this conference. So in one way or another, it's still going to be a reflection of the general consensus of the international community. So in that sense, it, it will have some legitimacy. The problem is any kind of decisions that then come out of this conference are going to be greatly affected by the lack of Pakistan being involved. So anything involving uh, a regional security framework that could potentially help manage and constrain conflict in Afghanistan into the future is going to be affected by Pakistan not participating. Uh, Similarly, any kind of outreaches to the Taliban, the Taliban are another party that are not participating in this. Keeping both of them out of the conference is going to severely limit what it could possibly be accomplished. So the end result is with a whole lot of countries, minus the important ones participating, uh, you're going to get a lot of pledges about how everyone is committing to the future of Afghanistan, but it's not actually going to move beyond the stage of just being pledges. Those are some criticisms also echoed by questions. There was a Q&A portion after the opening today in Bonn, Germany, and during that, an Afghan journalist um, asked a question of Afghan Foreign Minister Zalmay Rasul. He fielded the question. He asked about the assessment of a decade of war, and, and this is Rasul's response. If any country which has, a, as I mentioned, a, a democratic society, an elected president, an elected parliament, the freest press in the region, 35 private channels who criticizing government heavily every night, a parliament which is... Uh, extremely vibrant, more than vibrant. Every day we are called to be impeached. Eight million kids are going to school. Forty percent of their girls, first time in our history. Afghan Foreign Minister Rasul listing a series of successes, at least from his perspective, in education, media, and the government. Joshua Faust, your response to that? Well, the the political questions are interesting. Um, Afghanistan has not held a broadly legitimate election in in quite some time. I mean, the the closest would maybe be the parliamentary elections in 2005. Uh, The most recent rounds were fraught with uh, electoral fraud, ballot stuffing, voter intimidation, all kinds of politically motivated violence. But claiming Afghanistan as a democratic success is, I think, really stretching it. The education picture is a little different. Uh, There are a lot of children in school. There are a lot of children still not in school. Uh, One of the big challenges in in getting that going is that the international community has adopted a habit of building schools but being unable to administer them, staff them, or develop curriculum. So the education piece isn't just as simple as counting how many kids in school. It's also what they're learning and then what they're doing afterwards. That part isn't resolved either. But, I mean, you know, Afghanistan has achieved some pretty remarkable things over the last 10 years. Uh, One of them is actually the development of a telecommunication system. So in 2000, there were almost no phone lines going into anywhere in the country. 
now there's this advanced high data, high bandwidth uh, cellular phone system in the country. Things like that are a legitimate accomplishment. But the problem is even while you're listing all of these technical achievements, we're still stuck with this kind of fundamental violent political dispute between the government and the Taliban. And no matter what technical achievements you put up in front of that, it doesn't actually go towards solving that fundamental dispute. And that's the problem. And that's really what's holding Afghanistan back right now. And Joshua Faust, quickly, there's the ongoing practice of night raids where NATO forces enter Afghan homes and sometimes arrest or kill Afghans. It's been a big concern. Is the conference likely to address issues like this? Yeah, it, it, it probably won't. Um, there, there's, there, there are very few people, if any, at the conference right now who could legitimately say that they're representing the views of ordinary Afghans or just regular Afghans on the street. Joshua Faust is a fellow at the American Security Project. He spoke to us about the conference in Bonn, Germany, and the future of Afghanistan. Thanks so much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you.